Okay, so welcome to my Morocco summary video. Um, the 31st, Thursday, we went to Madrid. It's 6 in the morning and hung out there and explored that until our plane left from Madrid to Marrakech. We arrived at our hostel and basically slept, woke up the next morning, and we left before the hostel was serving breakfast, so we went out on the street and found bread. Bought that for breakfast and bought some for lunch the next day. I mean, lunch that day also. And then we met, went and met our caravan of people that we we're going to be going on the tour with. And they drive crazy here. And so we didn't even really get to see Marrakesh because we were only there a night to sleep. And it was so nice. The guy came and got us and took us to where the little caravan met. And we just drive through the Atlas Mountains and stop at all these little places and there's this woman herding sheep or whatever animal that is and yeah it's really beautiful it just reminded me of like the Grand Canyon and Colorado and my heart yes and then we went to what is that place called So, more driving, and then with the tour we went to Ait Ben Hagu, in the city here. No one lives here, but they live on the other side of the river, and that village, like a bunch of movies have been filmed there, The Gladiator, um, Prince of Persia, and other things like that were filmed there. When that was a Berber village, um, Kasva is like house. Alcazar, like palace sort of thing, and um, Berber, but anyways, hey, yes, one tribe would live there, which was about 3,000 people, we went in and got to see, like, these little boys helped us cross the river, and then they asked for money, for little turkeys, and then the guy explains everything to us in English, and there were Germans and French girls, and chicks from Belgium in our group too. In our little caravan of 18 people in the minivan. Um, right. And then we go into this house and see like the old fashioned mud stove and the utensils they used and the bricks and how they made bricks and they like have to restore this every year because the houses get like dried out from the sun so they have to redo it every year to maintain it um and then we get to see how this art is made it's so cool they use indigo and saffron to make the coloring and then they just put it over fire the password is fire and they would send notes and um but now they just make art and then we went to the top and saw things from the top and yes, you get to see that. And then we drove the rest of the day um, until we got to our hotel. And then we like weren't expecting it to be that nice of a hotel. And then we said we were a group of five and they gave us this amazing room. So at the hotel we had a meeting about what we were going to do the next day and we had a delicious dinner and then the guys came and played drums and sang all traditionally and then we <laughs> got to do that too and my fingers hurt so I was not playing the drum appropriately apparently. Um, yeah but that was really cool.
next day, we got in the van and went to see this gorge and some Berber villages, and this guy was talking about how they gardened, and there's a nomad family that lives near the side, to the side, and they give 50% of the food that they plant to the nomads, and also, like, he was showing us about this stone marker, how they knew, like, which part of the garden was whose, and that they would just move it over and try to extend their part of the garden, but when you saw that someone was trying to come and take yours, you would just go take half of theirs. What a battle. And then we went and saw this, um, cooperative of women who are widowed or, like, don't have anything, so they work here at this rug-making place out of... Um, the rugs are made of baby camel, regular camel, cactus, um, and I forget what other things. But it was super interesting, and as always, they gave us Berber whiskey, or turban tea, as the man called it. Because <laughs> it has a little white cap of bubbles, if you pour it correctly. So they just show us all the rugs and we continue up into the gorge and take a few pictures and it's like really famous for rock climbers. So yeah that was cool. I thought of like Harrison and everything and like Bond Creek. Anyways and so we climbed up a little bit like just what we could. Um, yeah there's Jax and Megan doing it. And then we went on our way again to go to the desert and we made a stop to get water because, well, it's the desert, and I was freaking out because I didn't want what happened in the Grand Canyon to happen again, so we bought a ton of water, and here's approaching the desert, and oh my goodness, it was amazing. We got to our little hotel thing that was right on the edge of the desert, and took a rest there before we went on the cameras, and <laughs> I made a makeshift turban thing with my scarf and Raga. Anyways, so we got in the camels. The camels were amazing. Oh my goodness. Except they're not actually camels. They're oh, the one humped camels. I forget what they're called. This is a hotel thing. We didn't actually sleep there though. There's some. This guy, <laughs> this guy was one of our bus drivers. So all we took into the desert was one backpack with just our pajamas and stuff for the night and a backpack of water between all five of us. And then um, I thought I lost my passport. We were at the hotel filling out things before we went into the desert. But I forgot I put it in the bottom of the backpack with my stuff and the things we were taking in. But I was freaking out because I thought it left it in the other hotel and there was no way of getting it back. Ugh. So it's just out, but then it was there. So all good. So then we get on the camels and give them names and that was super fun. I got a little sunburn, sunburnt, but not much. So that was good too. And on the guy right there, not not the orange, the other guy, was like the leader of my little line of camels and I was in the front. And we'll explain that later more. Well pony to crepes and to camello. Hemos decidido nombres para nuestros camello. Cameos. Mío es Guille porque es un guía de nuestro grupo. Entonces, guía, Guille, Guillermo, Guillermo. ¿Sabes? Cristina, que. Mire ese putito en la arena. Qué guapa. Oh. Y también otra. And there are these four wheelers and like other cars that drive in the desert to go to the camps. To, like transport things out to <laughs> Found that interesting. Um they're also like yeah, so he just leads us through the desert like listening yeah. to the camels. I don't know how they do it, walking up all these dunes and stuff. Like I feel and then we were supposed to see the sunset, but it was so cloudy you couldn't see anything. We climbed up to didn't see anything, it was still fun, we had fun up there. Megan, to name, oh sorry. Okay, como se llama tuyo? 
Esperanza. <laughs> Welcome to the dunes. I am the guardian of the dunes. Literally, there's no sense in that at all. <laughs> she just sounds really <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I literally go... You don't understand, I can't do it. Literally, you do not... I'm <laughs> Megan Heyman. <laughs> and we're in the Sahara Desert! Woo! <laughs> Number dolphin. Okay, the, the burial. The burial! Good God. <laughs> Welcome to the dunes! <laughs> I am the guardian of the dunes! <laughs> Too British now. Do the Indian accent. Welcome to the dunes. Welcome to the dunes. <laughs> I am the guardian. <laughs> So like I said, we have dinner at the camp. Delicious. Everything was bread. There was so much bread there. But I love bread, so that was good. Bed for my house. Then the guys have a little drum ceremony again. And, oh, I sang again, there was a little dance party too. Then after, our guides took us on a night star walk. They are just like, who wants to come? Okay, and then we just walked into the desert. Fully trusting them that they knew what they were doing and where they were going, that we wouldn't get lost in the middle of the desert. Then we went back to the little tent and slept for the night. And woke up at like, Gilie, you're the best. Bye bye, cameos. None of us want to leave. I'll see you by to the six the next morning to go and get on our camels and go back. And then we had breakfast at the hotel thingy. And the guides, they know so many languages just from tourism. Like they never like properly learned the language. That amazed me. Anyways, so we went with our caravan for an hour, then hopped in a taxi that was also paid for by this company. Amazing. And they took us to Fez because everyone else was returning to Marrakesh. And so the guy from the hostel comes and picks us up there and gives us a little tour. We get settled in, and here's the call for prayer from all the mosquitoes. Up on the terrace. And then we just go and explore the city and get dinner and go home early because it, um, we don't want to be on the streets when it was dark. And then we get an early start the next day. And the hostel called a guy to give us a tour the next day. So we ate breakfast at the hostel at 9, went on the tour at 10, and the guy took us to a bunch of places. The roads are so tiny. There's more than 9,000 roads in the Medina de Fez. And so we went and saw this leather tannery from on top of the store that sold leather. And we seen about some shoes there and I bought some other stuff there. And then we walked through this part that was like all cedar. That's mint, by the way, that they put in the tea. Um, this is all cedar, and they show us like bread baking ovens that are like, really popular, and the women take their bread there to get it cooked. And also, they sell bread at ovens, and 
It's little puestos. See all that bread? Bread delicious. They're doing reconstruction, like, but the streets are so tiny, they can't have machinery, so that's that. And then, um, we go to this natural pharmacy and see them make argon oil. And the guy tries to sell us stuff, and yeah, we did end up buying some things there. Then first is argan, the rest is olive olive oil, but here you can get the really one. The word oil, argan oil, you can use it for the hair. Makes your hair shiny, but you never use the hair. Look at the young boys now, they use a gel in hair, it's only making it using the hair. But argan oil, you go to the email, when you put argan oil, then you will see it. This mini mini street, that's actually a street. <laughs> Yay. And then this, like embroidery place see the women doing embroidery normal no and then uh what's next but i love the street environment with all the shops and everything and just bustling bustling and everything is so cheap there because their currency is so inflated. And uh, yeah, which is interesting. See, like this whole different type of stuff I've been in before. And they use these um, horses on the street to transport things because cars don't fit in the Medina. And we saw them make the rugs on that machine. Then we went upstairs to the terrace to see the view from up there. And in passing on the third floor, we saw this little like, workshop over they do more of the spinning of the wool, the thread, oh, and making a little photo shoot in the bathroom. Because <laughs> the wall was cute. And then this was on the street. It's like the marriage things that they do and remind me of the episode of Beth So Raven if anyone knows what I'm talking about yes yes okay then this is on the street we tried to find the palace and it's all walled in so this is like the best part of it we saw walked all the way around that then finally went up to this place where you're supposed to be able to see the sunset it's supposed to be really cool and once again super cloudy it wasn't beautiful but we still had fun climbed up the rocks a little and it was a good view, had a little photo shoot with Christina, and then on our way down, <laughs> it was fun because we couldn't find a way down, and when we finally did, it was like super slippery and difficult. random horse is just grazing here, you know, cute. And we went to find our way back home and kind of got lost on the streets and these two guys were like, oh, here, we'll help you get directions. And I was like, uh, no, we aren't listening to them. <laughs> and then we found this guy from our hostel that works at our hostel. We're like, yo, help us, bro. So we did. Um, and then that guy was just picking chickens. Like, there were just chickens walking around the street. And then they're like, oh, okay, now we're just going to kill it and, like, pulls feathers out and sell it to people and then we keep seeing these sandwich things and I'm like I need to try this it's really good have zero idea what it is if anyone knows tell me and also I ate this not the things he's putting on but the things in the corner here and it was so cute he thought I was taking a picture of him but I wasn't 
Anyways, they're really sweet and interesting. I'm not sure if it was good. Then we went back to the hostel and rested. And I talked with Megan and we played a game. Then we went to sleep. And the next day. The next day we did more some more shopping on the streets for some last souvenirs and went bartering more for some scarves that Megan wanted to buy and found the cheapest price and chewed them down. Then we uh, went back to the hostel, got our stuff, and went to the airport to go back. Took the plane back. And ate our food in the airport. I had a bunch of Durham's left over, so I bought a bunch of food, which would be my lunch and dinner. And a meeting with the dry breast. But it's okay, we're going back to Madrid. Don't know what we're gonna do there. Africa was a great experience. What was your favorite? Honestly, I think the concept of appreciating things more. I mean a banana and bread sandwich. A banana sandwich is what you would call that. <laughs> banana bread. And there are only four gates and only one of them is being used. I'll be back to Madrid, then from Madrid to Valencia. <laughs> it was probably one of the best trips of my life. Like, so different from anything I've ever experienced before, and I loved it. Yay! Oh, no, wait, that was correct. <laughs>